type AB negative blood. How do I know? Because the Elden card tells me so. So the Elden card is a quick and easy way that you can check your blood type. So see if you're like AB, AB, O, AB negative, AB positive, all those various things. And all those various things refer to what type of sugars your blood cells display on their surface. So these like glycans. So people with type A blood make one sugar, people with type B blood make another sugar, and people with type O blood don't make either of those sugars. They just make like the core base sugar, none of the like upgrades that the A and B have. And so if you were to give someone with say type O blood, AB blood, well now that that person is seeing blood that seems foreign to it because they have these sugars that the body doesn't normally make. And the way that they see this as foreign is by having these little proteins called antibodies that are going to bind to those foreign proteins and call in the immune system say, hey, something's going on here. We, these aren't ours. Whereas people that don't, that make those blood sugars, they'll have, they won't have those little antibodies against it um, because then they would be constantly attacking themselves, which would be bad. Um, and but if you were to give someone incompatible blood type, so give them blood with a blood transfusion containing those sugars that they don't normally make, then they will attack it. And this is really bad if it happens in your body, but it's really helpful if it happens on the surface of a card. And so basically, these cards have those little antibodies, those those proteins that are going to bind to those foreign things. They have them like the purified version of them, just like stuck on the surface of these cards. Now, if you stick a drop of blood on those, and that blood contains the sugar that the antibody recognizes this is going to cause that blood to clump up and a glute which we call agglutination and then you get these like clumpy things but if the person doesn't have that blood sugar well now there's nothing for that antibody to bind to nothing for it to attack and you don't get any clumping and so this is the basis of how the cards work and by taking advantage of this thing that we wouldn't want to happen in bodies which is why we do this blood type compatibility testing before you were to give someone a blood transfusion so now let's talk a lot more about the details of this, about these ABO blood types, although I have much more on it on another post, and about how you actually go about using one of these cards. It's super duper simple. They're about like five bucks a card. You can just order them online, um, and they're a fun and easy way to check your blood type. So quick and dirty version of blood types. The AB and O, that refers to basically there's this ABO gene where you have, there are three different versions of this gene. There's the O, the A, the B. Because you inherit two copies of this, so one from each of your biological parents, you have the chance of being, say, type AB. Or you could be type A, or you could be type B, or you could be type O. And so basically, these are like co-dominant. So what this means is that if you have even one copy of the type A blood, you're going to be at least type A. You might have like, even if you, you might have two copies of A, or you might have a copy of A and a copy of B and O. If you have a copy of A and a copy of B, well, then you're still type AB, but you still make that type A sugar. With type B, same sort of thing. If you are just type B blood, that could be BO or BB. Um, and if you are type AB, you're going to be making that B sugar as well. With type O, you don't make either of those sugars. And so these different sugars come because these different versions of that gene. Well, what the gene is actually has the instructions for making is a glycosyl transferase, so a sugar adder. The sugar gets added on to proteins on the surface of blood cells, as well as protein, these um, proteins on um, proteins and lipids and things on the surface of blood cells, as well as on the surface of other cells and other proteins. Um, but there's so many of them on the blood cells, and we have so many blood cells um, that this is going to be an issue with blood type compatibility. Um, and so basically, this blood type compatibility comes into play because people who don't normally make the blood type normally make that sugar will see that sugar as foreign if you were to give it to them. And the reason why they see it as foreign is because they have these little proteins called antibodies. So antibodies are made by the immune system. Um, and the more on how they're actually made and shows in another post, but basically it's this random selection process where these immune cells are making different versions of these proteins that have these different variable regions. And then if those variable regions recognize something that's foreign, then, and those don't recognize anything that the person normally makes, those antibodies, those blood cells that make those antibodies will get selected for, and you'll get more and more of those antibodies made. In terms of some of the terminology we 
produced, basically the antibodies are going to be those little proteins and then the antigens are things that those proteins will bind to. Um, so basically in the case of these blood types, the antigens would be the sugars on the surface of those blood cells. In the context of the blood typing, we can refer to these antibodies as agglutinins because they're going to cause the blood to clump up or agglutinate if that blood contains the sugar. So if it contains the antigen, um, which we can refer to as an agglutinogen. Um, and if you're wondering why would people have antibodies against the, like a blood sugar if they, at least theoretically, never eat people, well, that's going to be because there are like bacteria and things that make similar um, similar sugars, and so people might have antibodies against those sugars even if they've never um, been exposed to the actual blood, um, whereas people that actually make that sugar themselves, they wouldn't make antibodies against that sugar even if they were to encounter it um, in the bacteria, from bacteria and things like that, from food, because then they would also be attacking themselves. And so the cells that make those antibodies will get selected against and they won't make a lot of them. And so then you get some sort of situation like this where people who have type A blood um, won't, will have antibodies against type B, but not type A. Um, people with type B will have antibodies against type A, but not type B. And people with type O will have antibodies against both of those. And people with type B won't have antibodies against either of them. And if you're wondering about the type O, well, basically what happens is that they only make this core sugar, whereas people who have type A or type B, they, they take the sugar one step forward. They have a functional version of that glycosyl transferase, they just add different sugars. Whereas people with type O, they don't have a functional version of that glycosyl transferase, so they stop at this core sugar. People with type A and type B, they still make that core sugar, um, but most of it they modify, but a lot of it they modify, but not all of it. And so they're still used to seeing this core sugar, and so they won't have antibodies against the type of blood. And this leads to a complicated situation where you're trying to um, figure out blood typing. One way that you can figure out whether blood types are compatible is by mixing their blood um, in like a test tube. But the way that we do it um, on these cards uses these purified antibodies. So on the surface of each of these cards are stuck on little antibodies. Um, and then you add a drop of the blood, you mix it up and you see if clumping occurs and clumping will occur if that blood contains the sugar that those antibodies recognize. And remember that people who, um, don't, have, who don't make that sugar won't have that sugar and so you won't have the, anything for the antibodies to attack and so you won't get any of that clumping, any of that agglutination. And then there's a control well to make sure that the test was valid. So if you see clumping in there, then that's a problem. So a little more detail about how you use these kits. Um, as I mentioned, they're fairly cheap. When you get them, they'll come with like an instruction guide. It'll come with a lancet. So this is going to allow you to puncture your finger to get the blood, a little dropper. So you, um, you have to add water to those little drops to these suspend things, um, as well as these little, um, I don't know what you call these things, but these little, blood transfer things, um, these little sticks that you use to transfer the blood from your finger to the drop, and an alcohol swab to clean things up. So when you get these cards, you'll see they have these four circles, one for A, one anti-A, one for anti-B, one for anti-B. This D is going to refer to that RH factor. Um, so as I mentioned, that's not a sugar, it's a protein, but people have um, either have a version, a functional version of it, or they don't. So they'll either make this of a gene for it, or they don't. So they'll make the protein, or they won't. Um, and this leads to the positive or the negative. Um, so RH stands for like the rhesus factor because they originally found something in monkeys that they thought was rhesus max that they thought was similar, but it wasn't actually the same thing. But the the name stuck, so we call it the RH factor. Um, there are different versions of RH. But the main one is RHD, and so this is why it says anti D. And then the control, which doesn't have any antibodies in it. Now these antibodies are stuck on firmly in the card and we need to get them, um, we need to actually add water to get them to actually like resuspend. So come off from being just like stuck clumpy on the card and actually get into a form where they would be able to mix with the blood and recognize it and also get like spread up with so we can spread it out over the card. So we add a drop of water. You just take this little transfer pipette thing. Um, 
suck up a little water and add a drop to each of these circles um, and allow them to um, allow them to mix and get all wet. Now you're going to need to clean up your finger. A little alcohol swab, kind of like massage your finger and get blood flowing. Separate these little sticks. Um, these are stuck together and then you just snap them apart. Um, so now it's ready to go. So you have to like unsafety cap the lancet, so the thing that sticks you. Um, then stick your finger and get the blood. You take each you take a drop of the blood with that little stick and you're going to basically add it to one drop of blood per stick and stick it on that circle. Do that for all four of the spots. And then what you're going to do is you're going to take those sticks and you're kind of going to swirl around the circle to spread that blood out over it. Now to really spread it, what you're going to do is you're going to rotate your card um, so give it 10 seconds in each of the four directions. Um, and you can see that there's clumps in some of these, but not clumps in other ones of these. Um, but yeah, it was really hard to turn off the camera at the end of that rotation. Um, but anyway, now you can should be able to see whether there are, whether or not there are clumps there. And so how you would then interpret this is that you can see there are clumps in there. So positive for A, pumps in there. So B, positive B, no pumps there. So negative for the RH factor. So that's A, B, negative. And no pumps in the control. So all worked well. And so I would read this as A, B, negative. And um, apparently that's pretty rare. About 1% of car patients have A, B, negative blood. Um, and what this means for me is that I could take um, blood from someone who was um, A negative, AB negative, or B negative, or O negative, but nothing that was from a positive blood type. So I hope that helped you understand how these kits work and the science behind them um, and why blood types are cool and important. Um, and yeah, so go off and test your blood if you're able to. It's kind of fun and easy way to do some biochemistry and learn something about yourself.